Are we good?
Good evening, church. I almost said good morning. I purposely paused because I knew I was fixing to do that. Good Friday. I have t- sometimes I have a t- hard time thinking it's good Friday because our Lord and Savior died on the cross for my sins. How can that be good? But then I look at it and said, oh my goodness, it is good because that's when my salvation began. I was redeemed from the cross. We're going to go through the little some liturgy today. We're going to be talking about the passion uh, story which you have in your bulletin. And at the end, there's going to be a video that you're going to watch. And it talks about the word goodbye. After this video, we're going to leave in silence. We're going to end with this video because it's so important to watch what the narrator talks about and about what our Heavenly Father did for us that day, that afternoon, this afternoon, many, many years ago. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, was lifted high upon the cross so that he might draw the whole world to himself. Grant that we who glory in the death of his, or for our salvation may also glory in his call to take up our cross and follow him. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Would you please stand and join me in hymn 301, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross.
You may be seated. I'm going to read to you Hebrews 10, 16 through 25 as our scripture for this evening. This is the covenant I will make with them after that time, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. A call to perseverance in faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body, and since we have great priests over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unwaveringly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. This is the word of God for the people of God. We're going to sing another hymn real quick, but I wanted to go through and just repeat one verse that kind of stuck out with me. Verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Number 25. Here's one word that I want you to pick up on, and I bet, I bet you already know who it, what it is. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. What was that word? Yes, it was. Encourage. Love. Feel compassion. Empathy. Forgiveness. So many words that go into encourage. That one just stuck out to me that uh, sometimes we, I believe all of us, need encouragement from time to time. So keep that in your mind as we go through and getting ready for the Easter season. We're now going to go through the proclamation of the Passion story. And it's in your bulletin. We're going to go through. Uh, you can read along. Jesus is arrested. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kindred Valley on the other side where a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priest and the Pharisees. They were, crying, they were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew back and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malichus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus they bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Peter's first denial. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, 
spoke to the servant girl on duty there and brought Peter in. You aren't one of the man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep him warm, to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. The high priest questions Jesus. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter's second and third denials. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself, so they asked him, you aren't one of the disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at the moment, a rooster began to crow. Jesus before Pilate. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, We would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then came back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priest handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders, but now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him, but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at a time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. Jesus sentenced to be crucified. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they slapped him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priest and their officials saw them, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, We have a law, and according to the law, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? He asked Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said, Don't you realize I have the power either to free you 
or to crucify you? Jesus answered, you would have no power over me if it weren't not given to you from above. Therefore, this, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at the place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here's your king, Pilate said to the Jews, but they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. The crucifixion. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had noticed and prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the sign was written Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I've written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here's your son. And to the disciple, here's your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. The death of Jesus. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on the stalk of a hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it was given, has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies that, that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken, and as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. The burial of Jesus. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. 
At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. At this time, we are going to not have an offering tonight. Uh, We're going to go straight to, uh, just felt in my spirit that we should have a mediation at the cross. Now what that is, is that you can sit in your seats and have some time to reflect, or you can come to the rail and kneel, uh, just thinking about what this day really means. Uh, We'll do that uh, for a little bit, and then we will go right into our next hymn, which would be 297, but after a small brief time of meditation. Thank you, Jack. Would you please stand for our next hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, 297.
Amen. You may be seated. Would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I want you to remain seated for this closing hymn. It's one of my favorites. Were you there?
May Jesus Christ, who for sake become obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you now and forever. And what we'll do is we'll end with this video and we'll leave silently. You need not say goodbye. You need not say goodbye. The people will shout my name. Pilate will tell them there's nothing I've done to deserve this, but they will refuse. Pilate will stand me beside Barabbas, a murderer, and they will choose him over me. Pilate will appeal to the priest, insist on simply whipping me to appease their fury, but they will shout it louder, crucify, crucify. But still, you need not say goodbye. My hands will be tied to a post. The sound of the whip will ring in your ears and in your chest. The soldiers will peel the skin off my back. A ring of thorny branches will be pressed into my scalp until the blood runs into my eyes. Oh, but listen, you need not say goodbye. I will carry that cross. I will go to the place of the skull and there they will drive the iron stakes between the bones in my wrist with a hammer that will nail my feet into the tree. I will be raised up as the world waits for me to die. Nevertheless, you need not say goodbye. Between two thieves I will hang. You may hear me speaking to my father your father. You may hear me ask him, why? But child, you need not say goodbye. What you won't see, what you won't hear, what you won't know until all of this is done is that in that moment, I was paying the penalty of your wrongdoing, every wrongdoing, every mistake, Every act of envy, every word of hatred, every moment of violence and greed and spite, every selfish desire, every lustful thought, every moment of weakness and weariness, all the failures of human history will be in my hands and on my head. On that cross, I will suffer the wrath that was destined for you. Every guilty verdict fallen on me, your punishment will be paid for in my blood and it will be enough. I will die on your cross. I will let out a final sigh. Know that I have loved you and you need not say goodbye. But if you must, if you absolutely must say the word goodbye, then say it like this. Goodbye fear. Goodbye sorrow. Goodbye rejection. Goodbye shame. Say it like this. Goodbye guilt. Goodbye condemnation. Goodbye all the regrets of the past. Look up at the cross and speak the words. Goodbye addiction. Goodbye chains. Goodbye hopelessness. Right here in this place, say it aloud. Goodbye captivity. Hello freedom. Goodbye loneliness. Hello belonging. Goodbye defeat. Hello victory. This is the end of the curse. This is the demise of the serpent. This is all debts paid. This is, it is finished. Goodbye all the powers of hell. Goodbye darkness. Goodbye dread. Goodbye every sin. Go ahead and say it. Goodbye death. Speak. B.
be free. But don't say goodbye to me. Yes, you'll see them put the spear in my side. But remember, it's only Friday. So, you need not say goodbye.